Andrea, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you if you wanted to share your screen. Yes, thank you. So, I think that you are seeing my screen. Yes. Uh, I prepared also some slide that I can share after the meeting so that we have uh, some common uh, material to, uh, to use. Uh, and we can uh, use this slide also as track for the demonstration today. So we have mainly four points to touch. One is uh, uh, the authentication, the submission process and the workflow process that are merged and something that we are uh, still finalizing that uh, I will be not able to showcase uh, today. So the authentication, essentially we have uh, uh, implemented the authentication uh, in the Angular uh, web application. Uh, we support external authentication, so Shibboleth. And uh, uh, we have login within the current page and a specific page that is used when you try to access directly a restricted content. So maybe we can uh, just move to the browser. So this is our uh, uh, demo uh, installation of our branch. Uh, if I click on to my space, I'm redirected to the login page. So I can uh, log in using a password login or a app. And I can, uh, um, as our REST uh, API is integrated with Shibboleth and exposed to uh, header um, the location header, uh, it prompts also for a login with Shibboleth. Uh, another option is in any page of the system, you can always log in uh, um, inside the page. So this means that if you are looking into a specific item, you can log in and stay on the item page and uh, start to work with the administrative tool on this item page. So for instance, we can go to login with Shibboleth uh, one nice thing that we have done for this demo is to um, integrate uh, uh, the system with uh, uh, the demo service provider uh, provided by the Shibboleth community. So this is something that uh, everyone can do. Uh, you just need to upload uh, your metadata for the ADP on uh, uh, the test shibboleth.org uh, and you have a, a Shibboleth IDP that you can uh, test. They provide three different, uh, um, three different uh, user. Uh, the user myself is currently configured as a submitter in, uh, in our demo system. So when you log in, uh, you are logged in as uh, myself. And if I go onto my space, uh, you will see your submission. So just quickly go back to the slide. Uh, the requirements for the submission process, so what exists in the current space was the ability to list past and current submission, to manage the workspace item, that means create, save for later, resume, delete, deposit the workspace item, uh, import from file, capture metadata from identifiers, and manage the uploaded embargo. So what we have done is to uh, create a new MyD space that is based on the search. So um, the most important thing in this page is the uh, show filter. Uh, currently you only have one option here that is your submissions. But if you are also um, in a validation group, you get another option that uh, is uh, alt task, and we will see later in the demo. Uh, here you get uh, all the list of items that belong to the uh, user logged into the system. So you get uh, different kind of item. Uh, we have two items that are already achieved in the system, uh, two items that are workspace item, and one item that is currently already sent into workflow. So you can just uh, see the workflow item uh, where you cannot make uh, uh, many action. Um, instead, if you looked for the workspace item, 
you see that uh, uh, you can resume this item or you can uh, delete the, um, the submission. Uh, the nice thing is then all this stuff of the mind space is configured in the usual way for the space in the discover XML file. So you can add uh, how many facets do you want based on metadata also. So for instance, here you have a facet on DC type and you have a facet on uh, uh, the tissues. And this facet currently work. So you can filter and you can also uh, search. So for instance, I can just say uh, search for sample and get some content. Uh, I just discarded one item and uh, anything like that. On the top of the page, you have the ability to start new submissions. So the button allows you to start a manual submission where all the information will be input manually and the drag and drop area will allow you to import uh, from a file. So we can just demonstrate the import uh, from a bibtech file that I will drag and drop. And uh, here you see uh, um, um, global message. Uh, so the, this is the alert notification that the Redix is a full request uh, that we have introduced. And you will see that now you have eight items. So you have three new uh, workspace items. That was the one included in the BibTech file that I have uploaded. So uh, we can check. Uh, which they are is just an export from an existing library. So all five attributed to uh, Shalanson as a, a author. So maybe we can just field for that and we get uh, a couple of, um, of items. Uh, another nice option is the ability to import uh, from uh, uh, from PDF file. So you can just start the submission, drag and drop a PDF file, and uh, uh, the system will work in, this, in a similar way than uh, uh, the BibTech file. The item is imported, is this one, and you see that there is a lot of information in it. We can go to see in more detail. So what is happened is then uh, um, we have extended the BTA uh, framework to be also integrated with Grobit. Uh, Grobit is an open source project that they use machine learning te uh, technology and deep learning to uh, parse our PDF file, recognize the structure, and capture the information directly from the full text. So, the very important thing here is that all the information are extracted from the full text, are not metadata in the PDF file, it's much more. So here you see that we have captured the title, for instance, the author, the date, uh, we have uh, the abstract and uh, the journal and much, many, many information, the DOI and so on. Uh, for instance, the the PDF file is nothing surprising, so it's the latest um, content from PubMed Europe for today. So it's a simple PDF file from a publisher, it's nothing really special. So going back to our submission, uh, here you will see a lot of uh, uh, the additional work. So essentially the submission now is one page where you have uh, uh, several panel. Uh, each of these panel is configured in the item submission and is uh, more or less the equivalent of the previous step in, uh, uh, in the previous version of the space. So uh, we have a set of uh, uh, described steps that are uh, the main information, indexing, publication channel identifiers. This is just uh, an example of uh, how you can configure the system. Uh, you could note that uh, each panel have a status icon that say if uh, uh, the panel requires some action from the submitter or not. And also some panel have uh, um, a delete uh, icon 
uh, that allow you to remove completely this section. This is because this section was configured as optional uh, um, in the item submission configuration. So you can start with something very minimal where you have just domain information, maybe and publication channel, and you decide that the index information where we have put keywords and abstract type language and other information is something optional that only if you want to provide, you can enable and start to fill this information. So going to the single uh, panel, you will see all the input, um, input type that we have implemented in the system. So uh, I will start from the title that is the most simple. So you have uh, one box, the, all the one box of this space where you can input uh, your free text. You see that there is an, a star uh, uh, near the title because this uh, metadata is required. And uh, we also have implemented the support for multiple language uh, at the metadata level. So in our configuration, we just configured only English and Italian, but this is uh, get from the value pair uh, in the old input form. Uh, this is the widget for the date, uh, where you can set just the year, or you can go to specify the amount, or also the day. So this is very similar to what exists before in, uh, uh, in this space. Uh, if you try to save, uh, the date is, uh, um, is mandatory, so uh, the system validate, um, uh, validate your input and uh, uh, also prevent you to deposit the item. So the deposit button is not enabled because you have some issue in, uh, uh, in some uh, panel. So, uh, another nice thing here is uh, um, this author uh, field that is configured as a group. Uh, this is a new concept that we have introduced that uh, partially implement, uh, uh, allow you to manage hierarchical, hierarchical metadata. Uh, more specifically, in this configuration, you have two metadata that are author, the author name, and the affiliation that are managed together. So what happens is when you have an author, I can click on this tag to open uh, the detail for this specific group. So I have this author and I can put the, uh, the, uh, the affiliation here and say uh, test one, for instance. And I can put another information, oh sorry, I don't have to save uh, this one, and I can save the affiliation. So if I click again, I see the name and the affiliation, and I can uh, uh, get another author and put uh, uh, another affiliation for this author, test two. So the first author have affiliation test one, the second author have affiliation test two, and one nice thing is that you can also drag and drop to author to reorder. And uh, uh, when you drag and drop, you will move with you, uh, of course, the affiliation and all the nested metadata that you have configured. Uh, you can also remove specific author and, and things like that. Uh, during the demo, you see that uh, uh, is often um, a message of uh, uh, saving. This is also because uh, uh, the system will uh, automatically save your input, uh, I think every five minutes. So there is a timer that uh, automatically will uh, trigger a save, uh, similar to what uh, Google Mail do and other system. Uh, another thing is that uh, of course you can add additional author in this case, we have uh, uh, integrated uh, the authority from uh, uh, the ORCID authority. So I can search on ORCID and get the uh, ORCID director. So a uh, hat loader and for it's ORCID and I have also this author to my list and maybe I put it to the first order. And I can decide to explicitly save. 
In the indexing section, you see another uh, type of input that is uh, uh, a replacement in our idea for the tube box. So uh, tube box was usually used for keywords. So you can do things like that. Uh, tag two, tag three, uh, 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 etc. Uh, it is important to know that you can use uh, uh, two word as a, um, a single uh, tag, and uh, you uh, to separate uh, one tag from another, you need to input a comma or you need to uh, uh, to use the the enter uh, the enter key. Of course, you also have a drop down in the usual way of uh, the space. And uh, uh, all of this stuff is integrated with the authority framework. So, in the publication channel, uh, for instance, you can uh, search for conference. So, I can uh, input something and a search is triggered. And uh, in this case, we use the internal, auto, um, the internal uh, authority list of the space Chris, but this is uh, just the authority framework of the space. Uh, you can use a, any external authority that you have uh, configured using uh, an authority plugin. It could be also the, the solar authority plugin uh, or other uh, uh, default implementation that are available in, uh, in the space. Uh, into identifier. Uh, sorry, just go back to uh, the publication channel. You will see another improvement that are two metadata, journal and issue, that are uh, show uh, one beside the other. So in the same uh, in the same row, uh, we have an asset uh, input form configuration to allow you to specify which metadata need to go in separate row or in the same row. And you can also decide how much uh, space give to a specific metadata. So maybe we can make the journal bigger and the issue uh, smaller. The identifier is uh, uh, an example of the ball drop. So you can decide which identifier you uh, input and you can provide the value in a similar way than uh, in the past version of the space. So another uh, important panel is, of course, the upload panel. Uh, we already have a file because we have started uh, uploading a PDF file from the MySpace. So the, the file was also automatically stored in the item. Uh, you can go to edit uh, the file and the edit of the file allow you to edit metadata of the file and uh, uh, edit uh, the access condition. So you can specify an embargo or things like that. So here you see a lot of innovation. Uh, the first related to metadata is then also this, uh, um, this input is, uh, uh, this panel is configured uh, uh, in the old input form. So you can decide which metadata ask for the, uh, for the B stream. As an example, we just had also the type so that you can store three information inside of the normal two information from this space. Uh, we have made the description uh, repeatable, but you can use uh, everything that you can use in the, uh, to describe the item, also to describe the um, file. The access condition is highly configurable, so you can decide which option are allowed in a uh, specific collection. So here you have all the available options. So you can decide that this file is open access or um, it is subject to a lease or to an embargo. It is reserved to the administrator group or to another group that we have called a network administrator. So depending on the choice of the condition type, for instance, if I the set embargo, uh, it allow me to, um, to set the, the from date of the policy that will allow some group to access this, uh, this file. So I can say that from the 31 March of 2021, the anonymous group will be allowed to access this file. Uh, 
uh, and then um, uh, in the upload file, you see a message that is uh, uh, related to the um, is related to the collection where we are making the submission. This collection is configured with a default uh, uh, BStream read policy for a group that is named the university library. So in addition to what we have decided, so an embargo that uh, expires uh, um, on 2021, this file will be also accessible to the university library. Depending on the collection, you can have a completely different configuration. That means, uh, for instance, if I switch uh, to the dataset collection, the form is reloaded and uh, uh, also the metadata that are requested could change and uh, uh, the configuration of the upload also will change. So the dataset uh, collection have a default to be open access for all. And maybe uh, it could also um, disallow the possibility to, uh, to set different policy. This is not the case in our current configuration, but this is possible. Andrea, uh, could I could I ask you a quick question on that? So when it says open access, yeah. if it says open access, I'm assuming that's the access rights after the embargo expires, and it doesn't override the embargo. Uh, no, um, this configuration don't make uh, uh, really sense. Okay, yeah, that's why uh, I was asking. Yes, because. Uh, the configuration say that uh, everything that you input in this uh, um, in this collection will will get unless the open access uh, the open access configuration. So maybe if you want to go in this way, uh, you should disallow the possibility to to specify a different access condition. Ah, uh, okay. So because this this will work on upend. So you get something by default in the collection that is the default bstream read and you can add something else. Okay, so that yellow notice appends rights onto it and, and, um, and they're both kind of added together, essentially is what you're saying. Yes, okay. but uh, again, you can configure so that the data set will not allow you to specify this information. Understood, okay, thank so you. This was just a, a, a stupid configuration that we are <laughs> to, to go fast. No problem, just wanted to clarify. Okay, and uh, the last panel is the deposit license panel where the submitter just need to uh, check that confirmed uh, the license. So the license from the collection is presented and uh, um, you need to, to accept. Once you have accepted the license, the deposit button uh, become available because all the panel now are in the proper order. If we close all, we will see that all the status will be green, so we can uh, actually deposit uh, the comp. Before to do that, uh, I want to show also that you have an add more here that allow you to add additional panel. Uh, this is what you have configured as optional in the item submission, so the old uh, step of the space. And in this case, there are all steps related to metadata. So for instance, you want to uh, provide some acknowledgement and you want to link a project. Uh, so you have information about uh, uh, a sample project or things like that. I'm not sure about which information we have. And of course you can save for later. That means that uh, you will uh, be redirected to the uh, MySpace where you can also delay the submission. Uh, you will be prompt to confirm. For our purpose, I will go to uh, not cancel our submission, of course. Uh, I can go to resume again the submission. You will get all the information that we have uh, input, uh, including uh, the affiliation and uh, uh, all, the, uh, all the information. And we can actually deposit uh, um, the item. 
So you received the notification that the uh, deposit uh, was successful. You see here in your magic space that the item is in, in the workflow status. Here you have another uh, new feature that we have introduced that is the ability to have a conversation with uh, uh, the librarian that will check your, uh, uh, your submission. So for instance, you can say, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, item is uh, really important, uh, please approve. Uh, what will happen is that an email will be sent to the workflow group and also to the email is recorded in the item in a, spe in a special uh, bundle. So you can always go to see what message was being sent from you and you can get uh, uh, the message that was included. So I a just quick question. Yes, Quick question please. on that while you're pausing. Um, so with these emails, uh, you said they, they get stored in a separate bundle. Um, do they, are they kept after the deposit ends up in the archive or is that bundle just temporary and only exists during the submission process? For, uh, uh, for our current projects, uh, we have received the requirement to keep this uh, conversation. Okay. So that the administrator in future can uh, uh, still check what I, what was happening and uh, consult uh, this information. Okay. I, yeah. I'm just showcasing all what we have, but I expect to discuss what is uh, appropriate for the general inclusion and what not. So this yep. maybe will be something very specific. I don't know if it will be of interest or not. Uh, it is nice if you see here, for instance, uh, we have another item that is uh, uh, in progress uh, that have a, a message with uh, uh, the flag new. So this means that you have received the message on this item. And this is because the item was uh, uh, rejected. So it was a previous submission that we have sent to the workflow and from the workflow we have rejected the submission and the rejection message was recorded uh, in the history of the item. So all other than just be received by mail, uh, you also get uh, this history of conversation on the item. Uh, the new icon is disappeared automatically because we have flag uh, the message as read, but you can always uh, 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 cancel this operation so that you still have uh, the new icon and you remember that you need to take an action on that. Okay, I think that this is, this is all for the submission. Maybe we can just check quickly also with the slide. Uh, so this was the initial requirements. Uh, the important thing is all this stuff is based on the existing flexibility of the space. So we use the input form that has been renamed the form submission. Uh, this part of the configuration is already on the master of the space seven. Uh, and uh, uh, we still use the item submission that has been reviewed to uh, replace step with panel. Um, the validation uh, is based on, uh, on this configuration file and we use the authority framework for all the autocomplete that you have seen and the search of uh, the lookup of the author in ORCID and things like that. So is no new stuff, is just uh, uh, existent functionality of the space. Uh, the import from the from file is implemented using BTA, that is the framework uh, uh, integrated with the uh, current GSPY and uh, um, a command line tool of, uh, of the space. So you can import from uh, uh, a large set, wide set of format, BibTech, HandNot, uh, RIS, uh, and so on. And you can implement your own provider uh, specifically, we have uh, implemented a provider that is integrated with Grobit. So you can install locally a Grobit server and you can take advantage of the Grobit functionality to, uh, to capture information from the PDF full text. Is Grobit something that is free for people to install? They just have to install it separately? Yes, it is a compatible license with uh, the space. I'm sorry I don't remember exactly if it is an Apache license or a BSD, but it is something compatible. 
Okay, and but it does require a separate installation, I guess, in order to enable Grobit. Yes, you need to to install Grobit uh, locally. That is a uh, an embedded service like uh, uh, Solar that uh, pro is provided with Jetty. Uh, Grobit, you can download and you get a Jetty server with Grobit installed. Okay, so it's very it's very easy. Sounds good. What we have provided uh, more than the current DSpace functionality is the search for MySpace. So you can search, you can filter, you can parse it, you can paginate. This is very efficient. It is based on Solar, so no uh, database query. You can change collection during the submission uh, and uh, um, input form is uh, updated uh, in the appropriate way. So if you switch from a journal to a book, maybe the, the journal metadata is not anymore valid for your submission, so you need to take some action. Um, uh, one thing that I missed to say to you is uh, um, if also you start the submission manually, so just using the uh, new submission button, and after that you input some information, drag and drop a PDF file, uh, the Grobit integration is triggered. Uh, um, is also triggered. So you get an answer method out automatically when you add content to your item. And this is done in a way that is uh, extendable. So if we want to integrate other services that are able to manage different kinds of files, uh, this will be possible. The basic positioning of the field and the form uh, uh, is much more flexible. You can put more field uh, in the same row. And uh, you are able to configure uh, the, the embargo step. So you can decide which, uh, which kind of access condition are available in a specific collection. Uh, you can set uh, a maximum date uh, for the embargo or things like that using configuration file. And you have the conversation with the controller. So the workflow process instead also is based on my space. Uh, the requirements was uh, more easy in some way, it was just to have a list of, of pending and claimed tasks and to be able to process the task. Can, so, I, can I pause you there a moment here, Andrea, before you demo this? Um, yes. Back on that other slide, I noticed you noted um, hierarchical metadata, but you didn't touch on that. I know this isn't full hierarchical metadata, correct? It's more around author and affiliation association. Could you explain that slightly? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, it is our hierarchical, uh, hierarchical metadata in the sense that uh, we have a new input type that is named the group. And when you configure the group, you point to another uh, uh, submission definition where you have the list of uh, fields that belong to the same group. So it could be used for have author and affiliation, but you can put uh, uh, whatever you want. So it could be a project title, program number, funder, all in a single group, and you can add multiple projects. And the idea is always to present the group as a tag so that uh, uh, you have the... Mm, Oh, we are looking out. Uh, you have your tag, and you can input a specific tag to. Okay, maybe uh, one that I have multiple author. Uh, this one has two author. So when you have a group. Uh, the primary information that in this case is the author name is shown in the, uh, right. in the tag. And when you click on that, all the information in the group are, um, are presented and you can change and you can save. Right, yeah, um, I, I understand. I guess I was just pointing out that this isn't adding, this isn't changing the underlying data model of DSpace to support hierarchical metadata. It's more of a way to, to capture um, related metadata information in the submission process. Is that accurate? Yes, it is based on the strategy that uh, we currently use in this space, Chris, to support here, here metadata on uh, this space item. Okay. So the metadata are kept together using the same place. 
Okay. So, uh, author one and affiliation one will have uh, place one, and author two and affiliation two will be, uh, will have uh, place two and so on. If uh, uh, some metadata are not filled uh, for a specific uh, uh, author, in this case, uh, an uh, uh, affiliation value with a placeholder is in any case uh, uh, stored in the database so that uh, you always have the same number of author and affiliation. Okay, yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, this is the, the, the trick to avoid any change to the data model. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that since the, the, the slide was unclear about what was meant by that. So I understand, just wanted a clarification. If, if you use that approach and you run the update and metadata process in DSpace, is it, is it smart enough to retain the empty fields? Yes, because you need to, uh, to put the placeholder as value. So there is something like, like uh, triple sharp and placeholder and uh, if you use it also in the CSV file for book edit, it will work. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, we can uh, go back to the MyD space. Uh, maybe it's time to switch. So we need to log out. Uh, I will open a new uh, browser. Oh, it's not an out. Oh, I need to completely close the browser, I think. Okay, so, because we are using the Shibboleth for the login, and we don't ha yet have uh, um, a single sign uh, out from Shibboleth. Okay. Okay, so we can log in as alter ego, uh, that is our controller. So, okay, still to my space, we switch from the your submission to all task. And here we have uh, um, currently two items, two tasks. If you look to the status, one is in validation and another was in waiting for controller that is the label that we give to uh, the pull task. So one was already claimed, that is yet another test, and one is need to be claimed. And as you see here, we have a message that was the message that we send, it was urgent, and we can say, okay, this item is really important, maybe we can reply to the submit, or we can just claim the task. Now we have two uh, uh, task claimant, and depending on the uh, workflow step, we have different actions. So we have uh, uh, the ability to approve and reject and edit uh, the metadata. Uh, of course, we can still put back to the uh, pool and uh, uh, it's returned in the, uh, the pool status and we can claim again. And also here you can search, you can filter using the uh, facet and things like that. So um, if we go to edit, Uh, one thing that you could note is then to this, uh, in the main information, uh, we have a new metadata here that is description that was not presented in the submission. This is because this metadata is configured in the item, uh, in the old input form, uh, as visible only in the workflow process. So also this part is uh, supported, has been implemented, and this metadata is only available to uh, um, to the controller, to the into workflow. Uh, again, uh, all the other option uh, exist. Uh, you will see that some panel will behavior differently into workflow and uh, into um, into submission. For instance, you can decide if you want to allow or to add additional file or remove the file into workflow or as, uh, as in the previous version of this space. 
and uh, the deposit license is uh, presented to the controller, is flagged because the submitter have already accepted, but uh, uh, of course you cannot remove the license or you cannot accept the license on behalf of the, uh, of the submitter. So essentially the framework allows you to manage different panels depending on the status or space of the flow and uh, have a different behavior for the panel in the workspace or in the workflow. Okay, so uh, my task. If I go to, there are any question? Yeah, I was wondering, uh, does the grid view work here? Sorry? Does the grid view work if you click the, the grid button on the top left? Of the filters. Yes, the filter. Above the, the lip. Above the filters? Because uh, I assume it's hard to get all those things in the boxes. No, no, at the top, the very top, the two gray buttons. Yep. The detail uh, view. Yes, this oh, was the switch. Yes, the switch from the, the tail view and uh, uh, the list view. So does the detail view only show one item at a time? Is that the? Yes, it's paginated, but the idea is to rely on what will exist for the public search. Okay. So if here we go to have the cart as in the public search, it, it will work in the same way. Okay, so uh, if you reject the item, uh, the message will be also recorded in the item as I showed in, uh, in the previous demo. And here you can go to finally approve uh, uh, approve the item so that it will be published. And that's all. We still have uh, one issue to solve about uh, um, the immediately indexing of the action, uh, but this is a bug that we know and will be solved maybe today or tomorrow. So here you still see an old uh, task that uh, don't exist anymore. Okay, I think that uh, maybe we can go back to the slide to double check. Okay. I hope to have shown all. Uh, there are important things to say about how we have done this work. The most important thing is this is based on the advanced configurable workflow. So uh, as agreed, we have uh, removed the legacy workflow system of this space and uh, we plan to support only the advanced configurable workflow. So the one that you can configure with the XML file that have the concept of uh, uh, pull, uh, uh, pull item and claim it item. And uh, uh, again, the, the configuration is based on the input form and the item submission in regard of which metadata are presented, which are uh, uh, read only, which can be edited and uh, uh, which are specific panels just for the workflow for the submission and maybe different behavior uh, in the workflow and in the submission. Uh, what we have had is uh, similar to the submission. So you have an enhanced mighty space that is based on solar and uh, is configured using, uh, uh, again, the discover XML file. So you can add whatever filter do you want. And we also have included uh, uh, some uh, specific uh, indexing plugin to allow you maybe to filter uh, by submitter on the submission, uh, on the list of uh, tasks. And you have the ability to, to talk with, uh, uh, with submitter other than just reject the item. So, what uh, we expect very soon uh, 
is uh, uh, the current MITE space is already implemented in a way that will allow administrator to have a visibility uh, across all the ongoing workflow and we'll be, they will be able to abort a specific uh, workflow. Because we have uh, uh, implemented this thing using solar and using uh, uh, a field in solar where we store who is allowed to see the workspace item, we expect also that supervised item can conceptually be implemented out of box. So once we have uh, uh, the REST API and the interface to create supervisor order, uh, once you have the permission to see a workspace item, this will appear in uh, the, your submission uh, panel. Uh, we are working on uh, uh, two additional panels that are very close to be finalized. So I have uh, the screen on uh, how they will look. One is about the potential duplicate. So if the system will found a potential match with existent item in the system, an additional panel will be presented with a validation error at panel level. Uh, that requires the submitter to say if the found match is really a duplicate or is not a duplicate. So uh, if the, the submitter say that it is a duplicate, the basic, the default behavior should be to just discard submission. But if for any reason he need to create really a duplicate, he need to provide the, uh, an explanation, a reason for that. And this information will be recorded and the uh, uh, submitter will be able, of course, before to finalize the deposit to change the, uh, his mind and uh, undo the, uh, the choice and pick a different decision. This information will be also available to um, the controllers or the librarians in the workflow. Uh, they will see the same potential uh, duplicate panel and uh, if the submitter have provided a, a feedback on that, he will see what the submitter has say and can decide to flag the record for merge so that the administrator, administrator can use the merge tool to, uh, to merge together uh, the different duplicate. Or he can say it's not a duplicate or maybe it's not a duplicate uh, in the meaning of the digital library. So for instance, you have uh, some library decide to store the same item two times because one is recorded as a, a, a contributor of the author and uh, uh, the second time is recorded as a translator from uh, another author in the, uh, in, the repost, in the university. So there are several scenarios where uh, local policy can uh, can, can have a different concept about what is a, exactly a duplicate. So the last panel is the recycle. Uh, this is something that already exists under the sign, but is not yet managed on the REST API. So when you switch from a collection to another, uh, you could probably invalidate some information. Maybe in the new configuration, uh, the title and the keywords are not allowed. So you have input this information, uh, but you change the configuration and this information are not uh, any uh, uh, any longer valid and you need to discard this information. We ask the submitter to explicitly discard this information because they can always copy and paste this information in uh, another place. Maybe they have input uh, some author and they switch to a collection where uh, but instead to manage author, they, uh, this collection manage editor, and they want to copy and pass this information in the proper field. Or uh, they make a switch of collection, uh, uh, they was wrong, and they decide to go back into previous collection, and in this way, we don't have uh, uh, lost any information. But this is, a, in any case, a validation error. So if they want to deposit in, the col in this collection before to hit the deposit button, they will need to discard the uh, invalid information. As these, uh, these two are just panel, you can decide to enable this panel, this functionality in the item submission uh, configuration file. 
So this could be something that is not enabled by default. You can uh, plug in your own panel, you can uh, extend panel, you, you, you can write your own code. So it's the uh, major point of extension of the submission and workflow process. Okay, that was all for uh, the presentation. Okay, um, thank you very much, Andrea. Um, I, I realize we're at the top of the hour here and unfortunately I have another meeting coming up here so I'm gonna have to stop the recording um, while we go into discussion here. Uh, but I, I, I honestly am very impressed. Um, so I think this is looking wonderful. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording here so we can keep it for others for to watch and then we can go into some discussion here.